Hey guys, welcome to another conversation with a great friend of mine, Dr. Dan Sullivan. We've had him on here before. Uh, I love having you on, Dan, because one, I think you're one of the most inspiring chiropractors on the planet, health advocates on the planet, but you, you just, you dive into research, you dive into studies, and you have an incredible way of just articulating complicated science and, and bringing into layman's terms. So brother, welcome. Yeah, it's good to be here, buddy. I think the same of you. So I think that's why we resonate with each other because, uh, you know, it's kind of these complex issues. I know we're going to jump into one today. Like, where do you start? And I think we want to bring some simplicity to it so people feel empowered on, you know, what to do with it. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I've been talking about for years and being in practice now 23 years, um, speaking all over the world on the physiology of stress and uh, just trying to be really a global ambassador for stress. Um, People just don't realize that if it's more than just, hey, I live a stressful life. Um, it's more than, hey, because I ask people all the time, hey, are you stressed? And uh, they go, you know what? I'm pretty good. But I don't think we've realized the intricacies of where stress comes from and the damaging effects that come from stress, the physical stresses, the car accidents, the falls, the whiplash injuries, the chemical stress, the food we eat, the air we breathe, the things that we're exposed to, whether we know it or not. And then the emotional stress, life, relationships, abuse, and trauma, and truly how those have a factor if they're not taken care of in really causing our health to spiral out of control. Yeah, I, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, I think that's a place to start is to realize like we are just an accumulation of stress and nobody's immune to it. I mean, you and I, our families, like we are inundated by stress. You, I mean, from EMF to the food to the air we breathe. So I just, I, th I think it's important for everybody at, right out of the gates is, is, and you're so good at this and articulating this better than, you know, almost anyone on the planet. But if you start from a foundation where you don't believe you have the capability to handle stress or to do something to help better um, mm. mitigate the effects of stress, then we've already started off with a loss. But as you know so well, right, is the greatest doctors on the inside. We are mm -hmm. fearfully and wonderfully made. And therefore, God didn't leave us in a stressful environment to not be able to contend with it. And like I said, mitigate the effects of stress, not yeah. necessarily the external stressors. So I think that's what we really kind of, to me, would want to dig into. You know, it's so true. I think we have to uncover the misconceptions of stress. There's so many misconceptions. One, uh, misconceptions of health, I should say. One misconception is if you feel good, you're healthy. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Yet people feel good and die of heart attacks, feel good and have cancer all the time. There's another misconception that said germs make you sick. But if that was the case, we'd all be dead. The truth of the matter is, though, germs make a weak host sick. A body's no longer resilient to those germs. And so when it comes to talking about this subject called stress, Here's the thing. The secret isn't avoiding bad things. It's not avoiding stress. It's not going in quarantining and living in a bubble and living, you know, with your head under. That's not the, that's not where you're going to get the advantage. The secret in health is being resilient in the face of stress, because if it's all about avoiding bad things, we're already in trouble. OK, the reality is stress is going to affect us. Life is going to affect us each and every day emotional things. We've just lost uh, someone that we love dearly recently. And that's just life happens. We're, we're faced with mold and toxicities and air pollution and not the best diets and in all these different things. Life hits us. The secrets not avoiding life is being resilient in the face of life. Is my body's ability to go from a place of homeostasis, balance, adapt to life and whatever life brings me and then recover. The dilemma is this, when our body gets overwhelmed and stuck in a stress response, stuck in what's called allostatic load, a medical term means your body got overwhelmed by stress. It got overloaded. It's at that point where the body becomes vulnerable. It's at that point that the body begins to spiral out of control. And if we don't quickly get the body back out of a stress response, back to homeostasis, we'll never have a foundation to truly build upon when it comes to sustaining real, authentic health. Yeah, you're, you're spot on there, Dr. Pete. I, I think the other piece, you think about a liver. You know, most mm -hmm. people think, okay, a liver is designed to detox the body. Uh, if you think skin, I think most people say, well, it covers around, you know, surrounds 
the body in and of itself, but most people don't know that the skin is actually a detox agent. It's the largest organ in the body, but it's also a detoxifier. When you sweat, you sweat through the skin and the, and the sweat glands. There's another, you know, the lungs, the lungs help you breathe, but they also are a detoxifier. You cough stuff out, detoxifier. You obviously have kidneys that allow you to filter through the, the liquids of the body. And then you've got your digestive tract that allows you to, extra, you know, uh, get rid of waste. These are all important because God created our body just like he created to get rid of waste and to be a detoxifier. He created our body resilient. And and yeah. and there's something in psychology is called the selective attention. It essentially means that if, if I trained you long enough, I could teach you and train your brain to see only blue cars. Mm. And and you would look at you would go outside and you'd only see blue cars. We've all had that car that you have an eye on that I want to buy. And then all of a sudden you see it everywhere. Are there more of them? No, you're just selectively paying attention to it. And so the same thing, you know, this is you and I all day, every day for decades, which says, I just want to get people selectively paying attention to everything that's right with their body. That's why mm -hmm. I, even a stress conversation, you start off with, it is important to look at everything you're doing as capable. Your body can handle it. Now, we want to break that down. You said health. 2016, I went to the World Health Organization with a, with a, with a, with a wellness committee. And we were there to um, educate educate a certain department on 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 kind of the health. I mean, there was a bunch of chiropractors and, and some natural health uh, researchers. And I remember there was a guy there, and he talked about. And he threw up the slide, and he said, uh, "In 1948, the World Health Organization at the time we were called the World Health Association (WHA) turned into WHO." But he goes, "Dr. Andrea Stampar said and put down the definition of health, and he put it up there." Health is not merely the absence of uh, symptoms and disease, but rather the functioning, right? Mental, physical, and spiritual health of the body. And so it's important to know why. It, so, so here's the thing. And I think so many out there are well, why isn't that practice? Like, why don't we get access to that? Why don't most doctors subscribe to that definition to help us do that? It's because even he admitted, he said, we, with the resources that we have, we are so focused on trying to treat disease, we really don't have time to do all the other things that would, uh, you know, would define true aspects of health and healing. And so that's why we, you and I, like, I think it's important. We have to come on these, these, these podcasts and interviews and say, okay, I get it. You haven't been taught this, but mm -hmm. we're going to teach you these things. And when we put them into play, you can have this life here on earth that is more quality and not like, you know, everybody else. Absolutely. And I think it's important to understand as well. Like we've been doing this for a long time. I can't tell you how many patients have come into my office who have impeccable diets, exercise all the time and have cancer at the, for the second time at the age of 30. And then we know those individuals that really don't do anything you're supposed to. They eat fast food all the time. They never work out. They, and I think they're going to live forever. So the real secret is, like you said, is it's, Hey, can we minimize stress? Absolutely, we can. Okay. And we're a big advocate of that. But that's not the real, the real secret when it comes to truly sustaining and creating resilience is making sure your body is always adapting, but more importantly, recovering. There, so there's two components of resilience it's the toughness component, which is my body is able to be able to get hit and keep going. But then my elasticity component it's the elasticity component, which I believe is really the secret. The body's ability to recover. It's the recoverability of the body. So no matter what I'm doing, I can recover. Watch this. If the body's not recovering, if it's not getting back to homeostasis, if it's falling short of balance, that's the point of vulnerability. Okay. When that happens, your body goes into survival mode. Heart rate goes up. Blood pressure goes up. It affects stroke volume and blood sugar. Okay, your blood sugar actually increases. In fact, the glycogen stores in your liver actually convert back into blood sugar and it's stored in fat cells. When you look at weight issues and we look at inflammation and all these things, it's really a stress response. But watch this. Not only do survival mechanisms go into overdrive, but non-essential activities, digestion downregulates. Your immune system downregulates. Reproduction downregulates. Growth hormone down regulates simply because the body can't get back to homeostasis. And watch this. If the body doesn't get back to homeostasis, it creates these vulnerabilities that if they're not supported, leads to all the diseases that we face today on a regular basis. 
But our society has looked at all these diseases and called them abnormal. Therefore, if something's abnormal, we treat the abnormality. Okay, there's a definition in our culture called pathology. By its definition, it means the body is broken down; it's not doing what it's created to do. So, if you have blood work done, and your blood work doesn't show up in the normal range, they call that pathology or abnormal. But let's, you know, Doc, I know you know this, but let's introduce, you know, those that are watching to a new term: adaptive physiology. What's that? Your body will always adapt physiologically to the environment that it's in. So, let's go on a field trip. Let's go to Denver. We know that Denver is a mile high city. It's a, it's a mile above sea level. It's a higher altitude. If we went on a field trip to Denver, got off a plane, and someone was there to measure our red blood cell count, they will determine that in every one of us, our red blood cell count will have increased. Why? Because red blood cells carry oxygen, and we need more oxygen to the brain because we're at a higher altitude. Therefore, if we go on a field trip to Denver, get off a plane, and someone is there to measure our red blood cell count, and in fact determines that our red blood cell count has increased. Would you consider that increase in red blood cell count to be pathology abnormal or adaptive physiology? Adaptive physiology. We need increase in red blood cell count if I'm running, if I'm at a higher altitude. But watch this. Let's say you're at the zoo and a tiger gets out. We're having a good time together. And then all of a sudden a tiger gets out of the cage and we'll call it the epitome of a stressful situation. So we're running for our lives from this tiger, our blood pressure is high and everything else. And some medical doctor comes, or not even a medical doctor, just anyone comes next to us and says, hey, take this pill, your blood pressure is high. We look at him and go, dude, you're crazy. Like you, you see, we're running away from a tiger, right? We know better than that. The problem isn't the high blood pressure. The problem is that we're literally running away from a tiger. And we laugh at that because we know better. But what happens if you go to your doctor? The doctor finds out that your blood pressure is high. You start to feel lousy, right? You go to your doctor. The doctor checks you out and says your blood pressure is high. What does the doctor consider that high blood pressure to be? Abnormal pathology. So what does he offer you? A medication. And so watch this. That medication will lower your blood pressure. For three months, you feel great on this brand new blood pressure medication. But three months into it, you start to feel lousy again. So you go back to the doctor. The doctor checks you out and says, well, sure enough, your blood pressure is high again. What does the doctor consider that high blood pressure to be? Still abnormal. So what does he offer you? Another medication. He doesn't take you after one. He adds another one to you. Why? Because if we continue to misidentify the true culprit in sickness and disease and call what's normal, abnormal, we're going to lose. It's like going to war. And no matter what we do, we keep getting destroyed by the enemy. Because unbeknownst to us, the whole time there's a spy in our camp. The thing is, we know the spy's name. We're with him every day of our life. We just never identified him as a culprit. Until we identify the culprit, we'll never get the results we're looking for. But the moment we identify the real culprit, from that moment on, we get the results. Watch this. A body that gets stuck in a stress response is the number one vulnerability that leads to everything else that we're facing on a regular basis. So we talk to all of our patients. We talk to people around the world. There's a roadmap to get back to resilience. How? Restore homeostasis. And there's things that we could talk about to do that. Number two, replenish the vulnerabilities that were left in the wake of stress. And then over time, we can retrain a person's lifestyle. But if we just take this simple approach, this roadmap to resilience, no matter what you're dealing with, the thing is, cancer is considered abnormal, thyroid issues are considered abnormal, infertility and digestive, all of them are considered abnormal. But what if they're not? What if the true culprit was a body that got stuck under stress? If we can cage that tiger of stress, we're going to put ourselves on a foundation to truly get us moving in the right direction. That's why we're so passionate. This li We're living in an epidemic of, st of stress at crazy proportions. But I think in many cases, we've just misidentified the true culprit. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that's a very good, that's a very good explanation. There's a part of the brain here. Um, we all have, love the brain. This is this part of the brain. It's, it's kind of the, the, the midbrain area, limbic function. It's called the amygdala. This amygdala is where that it, it's the start of that fight or flight uh, uh, system within the body or what, what is known as the sympathetic dominant state you're referring to, this stress response. And that amygdala is important because, one, if you just carry around a lot of weight of just emotional stress, that can stimulate that. But then we're finding out now, as you just alluded to, Dr. Pete, is there are things in our lifestyle that will take that amygdala and spark it for stress, fight, or flight response versus the rest, relax, digest mode. And that's 
where we need you is if you're going to mitigate the effects of stress, we got to get you out of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access pointing towards stress. Now, those are big terms. All we want you to know is that there are lifestyle modifications in an environment that you can get yourself into that actually starts to remove what we call these rocks out of the backpack. They actually start to take the rocks out. So the weight of that stress is no longer felt because your body is in a parasympathetic state. And so it's, I think that's the piece where I, I just, at this stage, I have always felt Dr. Pete now recently is like, what do you, how do you even, where do you start? You know, and I, and I thought about this morning when we were talking about doing for do, doing this, this, I thought, you know, it's interesting because I, I think number one is, is, you know, you've got this bot, you, you've got things you put into the body and we could talk through that, but it's like every, we, we put stuff into the body. You got food, you got drink and you got supplements. Like, you know, and unfortunately some people are medication. So you put stuff into the body. So that's one piece. You put stuff in the body. Then you, you also have like where your body, like the environment that you put your body in, you know, like, do you, are you in sunlight or not? You know, are you in an environment with a lot of stress and around people that are stressful all the time? Do you have your body um, in, a, in, in a posture, a posturally correct environment, right? Are you sitting all the time? So where you put your body is important. And then I think about what your body does. Are you moving your body? Right. All these things reduce that stress load. They reduce not the stress load. They reduce the effects of stress on you. Are you moving your body? Are you getting your body proper rest and sleep? You know, are you are you creating enough activity in the brain and the body? And then you think about um, what do, what interventions maybe are you doing for your body? You know, as yeah. chiropractors, we like to really make sure, hey, there's a important aspect of when the joint of the spine move, they send a certain nutrient into the brain that allows your parasympathetic or your stress response to reduce. We know that that's been done in the research. It's so, it's why we're so passionate about it, but there's also other things, whether you maybe go to an acupuncturist or you put the, put, you know, uh, uh, different, uh, um, physiotherapists, different things to the body, massage and lymphatic drainage. These are all things you can do to the body. And what my point is, is I like to, I like to simplify it. You know, you yeah. got this body, how you move it, where you put it, what you put in it. It really, it really comes down to that, Dr. P. What's your thoughts on it? You know, I agree. And, and I think for me, I'm very, I'm a simple person. I like to take complicated things that I'm confused about and just ask questions and, and break it down in layman's perspectives very, very simply. And when it comes to resilience and truly creating resilience, we have what's called our roadmap to resilience. Number one is you have to restore homeostasis. But let's break this down. There's three distinct stress pathways in the body. There's a neurological stress pathway. There's a chemical stress pathway. There's an emotional stress pathway. The, phys the neurological stress pathway is activated through physical stress. It's either too much movement or too little movement car accidents, falls, whiplash injuries, or sitting at a desk all day. All of those things activate my body into a physical stress response along the neurological stress pathway. When the body gets stuck neurologically, the only thing proven to help get the body back to homeostasis is movement. Dr. Roger Sperry, you know it well, I won a Nobel Prize winner, saying that the greatest nutrient to the brain is actually spinal mobility. Why? Because when spinal mobility actually restores the body to homeostasis, when a vertebrae in the spine gets stuck, it begins to degenerate over time. That means the body's stuck in allostatic load along that neurological stress pathway. So how we restore that body to homeostasis are chiropractic adjustments, movement, vagal stimulation. Okay, so the first pathway is the neurological stress pathway. We get it back to homeostasis through movement and adjustments. The second pathway is the chemical stress pathway. It's referred to as the HPA axis. Nothing to memorize for those of you that are watching, but it's a hypothalamus pituitary in the adrenal glands. That pathway creates a stress hormone cortisol. Like we said, when that pathway gets stuck, it leads to all the diseases that people face on a regular basis. Well, what studies say is that the only way to restore that pathway back to homeostasis effectively along the HPA axis, are what are called adaptogenic herbs. Adaptogens are nothing new. They've been around for thousands of years, but the only chemistry that are actually bring you up to homeostasis or down, always restoring the body to balance. 
Okay, so the neurological stress pathway, we restore homeostasis with movement and adjustments. The chemical stress pathway, we restore homeostasis with adaptogenic herbs. That's why I put every one of my patients on adaptogenic herbs. And the third pathway is the chemical stress pathway. Like you alluded to, the amygdala, the limbic system of the brain. Well, that pathway is activated, okay, through life and relationships, abuse and trauma, okay? Basically, when I lose hope in my future, it activates the body into a fight or flight response. But if I can get my hope back, it restores homeostasis. There's a proverb that says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. A desire fulfilled is a tree of life. It's actually proven physiologically in the body. Okay, And what happens is when we go through experiences, when we have memories and we go through life, that memory is housed in our personal library in the cortex. But the amygdala, the emotional center of the brain, it actually attaches an emotion with every memory and that houses in the amygdala or the limbic system. So it's, it's a perfect balance. So if I go through a memory, it's a good, bad, or ugly emotion, but it's a, a balancing act. But if, we're not, if a trauma occurs, an emotional trauma like a death, and people that are going through severe trauma or abuse, what happens often is that memory actually, instead of being housed in the cortex and being put in that personal library of the cortex, gets housed in the amygdala, in the emotional center. So then when that emotion is triggered, even with something unrelated, it sends the body in the same vicious stress response. So it's imperative. How do we get, if the body gets stuck emotionally, how do we get it out of there? Well, we do a therapy called trauma, traumatic resiliency protocol. It actually disassociates the memories from the, the amygdala. So you can still have the memories, but your body can actually heal. How do we restore homeostasis emotionally? Hope, okay? renewing your mind in the word of God, surrounding yourself with people that see your, according to your worth, value, and identity. So first things first, on a roadmap to resilience, we have to restore homeostasis. How? Neurologically, we're going to do it with the adjustments, with movement. Chemically, we're going to do it with adaptogenic herbs. Emotionally, we're going to do it with hope. And then now that I've laid that foundation, if that's all I ever do is restore homeostasis and stimulate homeostasis, that's 99% of the battle. That's the difference between someone that eats clean and exercises and gets sick and someone that doesn't do anything and, and lives for a very long time. Why? The person that can get back to homeostasis is more resilient. Secondly, we're all about replenishing vulnerabilities. We can do that through supplementation. In fact, every disease has specific nutrient deficiencies and toxicities that we can support. We call that replenishing vulnerabilities. And finally, retraining lifestyle. Getting on podcasts like this, watching Dr. Dan Sullivan, there's so many others that we know out there that just want to empower people to truly get healthy. Trust me, there's a system that's broke and not going anywhere. And when it comes to my health and the health of my family, it is imperative that we steward over it. We have to steward it. If we don't steward our health and take care of our health, we'll lose it and we'll never fulfill what God's called us to do. Mm. So good, buddy. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, you're exactly, you're exactly right. It's, it's, it, it really does boil down to neurologic metabolic, which you mentioned in chemistry and, you know, psychologic. I mean, it, it, it's like, there's nothing else to address. Now I know there's a lot of factors within that, even timing of stuff. You know, we, you know, I got a good friend, Dr. Minnie Pell, she, you know, wrote a book called fasting like a girl and, and, and even fasting, what we know about the power and the benefits of fasting, not just what we eat, but when we actually eat it, you start to change your metabolic health yeah. by when you <laughs> eat certain things. It just can be that simple, right? Is giving the body a rest. When a dog gets injured, they don't eat. Why? They use all that energy for healing. And, and there's just certain things that it goes back to these, you know, ancient remedies, if you will, right? It's just that God, God created the best model and, and uh, you know, to, to live in today's environment, we have to go back some of those ways. So yeah, as well. Absolutely. And you know, Doc, I know how in your studies and so forth, I'm just amazed that when I look at autoimmune issues, if you look at the National Institutes of Health, it talks about HPA axis dysfunction, meaning the chemical stress pathway literally got overwhelmed and got stuck. And it's what leads to autoimmune issues. It's what leads to chronic fatigue. It's what leads to fibromyalgia. But if you look at cancer, if you look, even when it comes to the emotional stress response and allostatic load, in fact, studies will show now that in a lot of cancers, there's an emotional trigger. Simply the body got stuck emotionally in a stress response. In fact, 
I saw a study a while ago when it came to breast cancer that if it shows up in a woman's right breast tissue, it's typically because of an emotional trauma with a father figure in somewhere in their past. But if it shows up in the other breast tissue, the left, it's typically because of emotional trauma with the child. That's just fascinating to me because really, however the body gets stuck, it's imperative. Let's just get the body out of a stress response. People come to us from all over the world. The best thing that we can do for people, and the reason why we have them come into our office, is to help the body get out of a stress response, to lay a foundation. But even from the comforts of your home, uh, you know, just get movement moving, get active, begin to, you know, eat a clean diet. Doc, are there any suggestions that you have to, as we look at, hey, just in improving our lifestyle, improving just the way we live our life? We've gone through, I know we've both gone through many things as we steward our family. We've learned a lot. What are some of the biggest takeaways you've come when it just comes to getting moving in the right direction? Yeah, I think keeping it simple. I mean, you said it best earlier. It's like trying to be a, I'm a, I consider myself a simpleton too. I, I like all the research and data so I can know the evidence, to, you know, support and back up any claims that I make. Um, I, I think just simply speaking, you got to be hydrated. You got to get up in the morning, you got to hydrate, get some sun, get some sunlight on your eyeballs. There's so much cool research coming out. Just, just getting sunlight on your eyes sets your entire hormone system for the day and something so simple, but you're like, well, of course God would create that way because we wake up and we should be in front of the sun, but we don't typically do that. When you go down to sleep at night, start to get in half an hour before you go to bed, start to lower the lights. It starts to get your brain prepared for the hormones that are needed for deep sleep. So you can actually heal. Your nervous system is the only system that actually speeds up at night when you sleep because it's the healing system. Every other system slows down. It's that we got to support that nervous system. And so sleep is so critical. If you lower the body temperature, which you can do at night. It's why you can sleep so good in a hotel. Typically, if you lower the body, the, usually the, the room is, is a little bit darker and it's a little colder. These are all tidbits to just lifestyle things that I've, I've over time studied and studied of why, how can we get the little edge or the little advantage? So those things that come to mind, I'm big on, on like intermittent fasting. I know mm -hmm. we've talked about that in the past. Just the more I study it, the more I realize God did create us for fast and, and famine. He created us for at times when there was going to be plenty and times when they're not. There was a time for us to kick into certain ketone states to get energy. The other thing that's fascinating for research is, you know, you mentioned cancer and its relationship with, you know, metabolic health and also, um, you know, like Hashimoto's thyroid and, and, and you know, autoimmune conditions. You got to get the strength. And I know I'm kind of going a little bit, you know, back and forth, but the mitochondrial health, mm -hmm. and this is where your adaptogenic herbs, Dr. Pete, that you bring the, like is so critical because getting your mitochondrial health back up, your body can't do anything without energy. And if you mm -hmm. remember eighth grade biology class, you remember the mighty mitochondria. That's yeah. the part of the cell that creates energy. And we know because of our inflammatory diet, you get this cellular health that the cell membrane loses it's balance and it loses its permeability. The stuff can't get, the bad stuff can't get out and the good stuff can't get in. And you create this, this smoke within the cell, as I like to, as I like to describe it. And that really harms your mitochondria. And when you don't have ATP, you don't have any healing energy. And so that's really, so you question maybe, how do you do that? Well, what you just named Dr. Pete, how you just named it so well, that's what you do. You have to mm -hmm. reduce inflammation in your body. These adaptogenic herbs, get your lifestyle, get whole food nutrition, get the neurologic health back up. And then ultimately that, 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 uh, you know, that the, uh, psychological health, so I can give a tip on that in a minute, but yeah, it's just, it's, um, it, I don't want it to sound overwhelming because it can real quickly. And I, and I know I just kind of rolled off some stuff. I like this, but know this too, for those of you that are watching health doesn't have to be complicated. It's can be very, very simple. But regardless, let's just get moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, I'd rather have be on death's door and get moving in the right direction than assuming I'm healthy, move in the wrong direction. And just simple things, like even not even taking things away. You know, there's a lot of patients and people that I'll see and they love their Diet Cokes. They love their soda. They think that switching over from a Diet Coke from a regular Coke is healthy for them. And they just, they're just ignorant. And it's, it's, we come to the table just as we are, but there has to be grace for you. And I want you to know that there's grace for you. 
And simple things that we can do, begin to hydrate before you drink a soda, you know, begin to kind of transition. I remember even for my wife and we brought her from sodas. Okay. This is a long time ago. So not recently, but we brought her from Mountain Dew to Mellow Yellow. And we thought we was a huge health kit. Okay. Well, it wasn't actually a huge health kit, but a little bit less sugar. And then when we began to get her off soda, we began to drink water before you, you had a soda each time that she drank it. And then we switched over to sweet tea and sweet tea is not necessarily healthy, but then we began to go half and half. And then we began to cut and all of a sudden now she's with unsweet tea. There's so many things that we can do to just transition and know that there's great grace. I like to say it all the time, skittles in your mouth, twizzers or twizzers in your mouth, skittles in your pocket. It doesn't matter. There's great grace for you. And as we move in the right direction, I want you to know that no matter where you are in this journey, Let's just get moving. Get moving yourself. Begin to hydrate like Dr. Dan said. Begin to just normalize your sleep schedule. Begin to cut out the sweets, cut out the grains and everything else. And let's just begin to make healthy choices in the right direction. But Doc, I want you to allude to the fact of what you're talking about when it comes to psychological health and emotional health and well-being and some uh, tricks of the trade for that. Yeah. I uh, So I studied with a guy named uh, James Pennebaker. He did. He wrote a book, um, many books, but only book he wrote, and, and I actually dove into it because I wanted to disprove the model. I, I didn't think that what he said had, had validity until I looked into it. And he, and he does something, or he, he preached on something called expressive writing. And it means it's so simple. It's gonna, it's, it's like, it's so simple. It's gonna sound like, how could that do anything? But what happened is what he taught is you essentially take a piece of paper and you write out your thoughts. You, you write out what's on your mind, good, bad, or indifferent. And the crazy part, it doesn't even need to be legible. And then when you get done with that, and you may take five minutes, you may take 15 minutes and you write out everything that's, and then when you get done with that, you take that paper and you throw it away. It's not a journal experience. You're not trying to remember the stuff, but what he showed is that when you can put space between your eyes or your brain and your thoughts, you create such an open environment that literally it's, it's like, you know, it's like counseling. It's, it's, it's like, you know, taking and somebody guiding you through listening to it and kind of exposing it. And so you're reframing that, but you're partially just getting rid of what you just kind of mentioned, uh, uh, what you guys do that I think is so powerful it's it's what the research shows that when you could put space between your your thoughts and mm. you are not your thoughts. And so it's expressive writing. It's just that simple. And so I've always taught that. And, and, and the research behind chronic pain, like this is one example, mm. the research behind how chronic pain goes away by just doing that, because what they showed is chronic pain, people that suffer a lot of chronic pain, that after three months of chronic pain in the same area, it changes from the part of the brain that's physical into the emotional center. So we know absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt that pain in the brain does not just come from, it's, it's the phantom limb pain where you've probably heard of somebody has literally had their arm cut off, but they feel the pain in the arm that's no longer attached to them because pain happens here. And so these are these key elements that when you start to understand the stuff that Dr. Pete and I really like dive into, you realize Anything is possible when you start to move your body, right? It's progress over perfection. It isn't about mm -hmm. being perfect by any stretch. It's giving yourself grace. It's moving in the right direction. When you And the other thing is, I'll say this. You got to get yourself an environment where you're not on an island. If mm -hmm. you're left alone on your island, you will, you will be making decisions that are not you. I, I remember Dr. Pete one time, this is about 40 years ago, I had a toothache that was so bad. And I remember I had to get on a plane and I called my dentist and he kind of tried to walk me through it and he couldn't give me, so he got me in the next morning. And I remember in this airport, I was in a Chicago airport and I remember thinking to myself, this is why, this is why people make decisions. They're not themselves. Like I was not myself. I was like, I will do anything to get rid. And I realized this is the, it's a predicament that when you get in a place, you'll start making decisions that aren't yourself. And I have found that when I'm not, held accountable and I not put the people around me and not yeah. have the resources in the, in the environment of the doctors and the advice, then I, I, I'm a couple of bad decisions from it all falling apart. Right. Yeah. And so get yourself in an environment and start to move forward with, with progress. Absolutely. Doc. And you know, for those of you that are watching as well, if nothing else, know this, your life is significant. Your life matters. And God desires for you to finish well, to run this race well, 
I want you to know that that's why we're here, to simply support you on your journey to a happy and healthy life. Doc, I'm so grateful for you. I can't wait to have you on again and talking about just breaking down some other just ways that we can empower people's lives to truly live their best life. Doc, it was an honor to have you here. It's always an honor, buddy. My pleasure. And guys, look forward to another conversation here. They're loading weekly. Thank you for sharing this with your friends and family. We love you. We'll see you next time.